Hacker Twins here. Hey, Mark, what do you got there? I've got a 555 timer and a potentiometer, and I'm going to use them to control a servo that we have on our robot right here. Awesome. All right, well, you get that wired up, and I'll show everyone how it works on this robot. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got this mini breadboard. After I'm done wiring everything up, it's going to look a little something like this one. The blue knobs are potentiometers. By twisting them, you'll be able to control the direction the servo is turning. This is a 555 timer. This 555 timer is just the right size to sit on either side of the breadboard. One of the small ends has a notch. This is an indicator to tell you what direction the board is facing. It has eight pins and they all do different things. First, I'll add a 104 capacitor connecting pins one and two. I'll run a jumper wire from position two to position six. I'll connect another jumper wire from position four to position eight. Sometimes it's hard to put the pins into these boards. So I'll grab a jumper wire and shove it in there in and out a couple times to make it easier. Now I'll add a diode from position seven to position six. Cathode in seven, anode in six. Now I'll plug in a 220 ohm resistor in positions two and position seven. This is a potentiometer. They come in all shapes and sizes. This one is pretty simple. It has three leads, power, the signal output, and ground. One of the sides will indicate where the face of the potentiometer is. I need to plug it into a row without anything else on it. I'll put it here. Now I'm going to connect a 1000 ohm resistor from position 6 of the 555 timer to the signal output of the potentiometer. In this case, this is the middle of the potentiometer. Position 3 of the 555 timer will send the signal to the servo. I'll add a male to male jumper wire here. Now we need to add power and ground to this system. I have a really useful 3D printed battery breadboard holder. I'll plug in the breadboard to this part where it nests in perfectly. And I have batteries that could provide 4.5 volts. I'll connect power to position eight of the 555 timer. And then I'll add power to the potentiometer. I'll attach the negative end of the batteries to position one of the 555 timer. Here's a nine gram servo. The brown wire is for ground. The red wire is for power. And the yellow or orange wire is for signal. Now that I have the servo hooked up, I'll show you what it looks like attached to my robot. The signal that comes from the 555 timer isn't perfect, so you'll see that the robot arm jitters a little bit 